Having a blue day today, except for Natalie. Oh, yes. We are. Actually, What's happened to you, Nat? Why aren't you blue today? Well, I think you're probably, well, Paddy is night, D is day, you're <laughs> just getting into dusk, and I'm morning, I think. <laughs> <laughs> very, very or, good. Or, or maybe you I'm. Are. I like that. I, mean, I like that. Good. That midnight blue is lovely. <laughs> very nice, Caddy. Very, very nice. Um, anyway, so how have we been, girls? What's been any news? And it, sorry, I just stick, must stuck my hand up my nose. It's because I've been seeing my grandchildren, and one of them is not very well. I know. Oh, it's poor little Al. Well, he's got this. He's been sick all over the place, sick and then diarrhea, and it's been lasting for three days. But it's obviously, you know, they get all of this stuff from school, don't they? Yeah. yeah. It's the time of the year, you know. What it's like that? having. Seven children when one gets ill. Do they oh, all get ill? Yes, it's like dominoes. <laughs> and they all get ill one after the other. And I'm number eight and I'm ill for the longest. But I, can't, <laughs> I have to carry on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Do, Do they, they all look after you if you get ill? No, no, I have to still look after them. I don't think anything's really changed. And no. now they come back from, from London and bring me everything. And they still bring me everything from school. So you just have to get tough. What Do you remember the other awful. day you were trying to turn on the uh, the piano? You were trying to find the the electric piano switch the other day. Well, yeah. in the middle of the night, I don't I don't know why, Debbie. I suddenly was sitting on a piano stool in my dream, singing "Truly Scrumptious" with Albie sitting right next to me, <laughs> and was singing "Truly Scrumptious." <laughs> you made me dream of. Anyway, Albie was in my dream, so you can tell him. Oh, that he was oh how lovely. I think he's going to be in many people's dreams, actually. <laughs> a bit of a heartbreaker, you know. Yeah. Also, also, also very, very sort of snazzy in the way he dresses. You know, mm -hmm. he's one of these people like Mons that never gets dirty. Do you remember uh, Tony, um, Tony Curtis in The Great Race? Yes. How everybody else got filthy, and mm -hmm. he in every scene was white. Masculate. That's Albie. <laughs> that, old is that is hilarious. How old is Albie? Yes. Five. Oh, well, that's perfect age. Half yeah, but age. But he's always been like that. It's immaculate. Oh. Don't bet anything on him. Whereas it's the other, uh, Archie comes out of school, he's got a hat one way, blazer, you know what I mean, like, like that. And Albie comes out <laughs> of school, immaculate. Immaculate. So <laughs> it, it's funny, isn't it? Um, Osfos is the same, but Mons is the same as him. You know, his dad is the same. I remember one Christmas day and Mons jumped into the bin trying to get rid of all the rubbish, you know, to push it down. And he was actually in the bin, jumping up and down, got out the bin and he looked perfect. And I thought, <laughs> how, how does that happen? That's quite an art. We are thrilled to welcome back into our nest our very gorgeous, our very own personal serial killer uh <laughs> <laughs> connor mcintyre my darling connor i've missed oh. you oh. <laughs> so great to see you guys Lovely to it's see great you. great to see you, know, you. We, have to, we have to tell everybody d that he's not as horrible as he seems on television oh he's even worse girl even worse <laughs> oh. and better at the same time no acting required right is that what we say <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, I mean, Connor, so, so Connor, Connor, Connor and I have this thing, don't we? That we're, all I need to say to you is the the Azores. The Azores. Oh, we'll never forget that location. The Azores. <laughs> that's a that's a whole program on its own, Debbie, isn't it? It is. So we were, <laughs> we were on a we were on a ship going to Barbados, but we only got as far as the Azores three times. Three times. Yeah. <laughs> In one journey. Sure. Every, every time I spoke to Debbie, I'd say, where are you now? And she'd go, the Azores. <laughs> what, again? Yeah, yeah, and then the again. next day, where are you now? The Azores. <laughs> what? It was still an adventure, though. We had a nice time, didn't we? It was great. We, we, we yeah. did, but we ended up a bit like blue coats, I think, because yeah. we did everything. Yes, I we mean, did everything we did. because all the, all the ships, uh, everybody got COVID, and we were the we were the last ones that were left standing. So we, yeah. you know, Michael Howe ended up playing the piano, and we ended up doing. God, I mean, just anything that you could possibly do on the ship, apart from 
cook we, we did but or waiting Connor, on tables yeah yes waiting on <laughs> waiting on tables but but Connor first of all I must say how excited I am that you, that you are here because uh, we haven't seen you for a while because you've been a very busy boy haven't you well so I've been busy in the Alamo with uh, uh with paintings a few exhibitions this year I've been in I've been in London with a few shows this year um so the the, the Alamo has been great, and of course, uh, the other night was the premiere of um, Our Kid, which yes. was an uh, independent film that we made in Liverpool uh, last year. And um, mm-hmm. as I describe it, it was made on two broken shoestrings and a pot of glue. Yeah, <laughs> literally. And I'll give you one example, if I I give you one example, if I may. Two weeks out, they have a location. Uh, and it's all done on favours and, you know, the goodwill of the community, friends of friends and friends of neighbours. But two weeks out, the guy who said he would provide the uh, location said, no, so I'm selling it, we're boarding up. So we end up filming in the producer's dad's pensioner's bungalow. <laughs> okay? Now, uh, I'm not sure if you, if you know anything about the film, but it's a beautiful little film. Uh, written by Daniel P. Lewis and uh, directed by Sean Cronin. So just in the lounge, Thomas has got cerebral palsy, so he has a big, like, a hospital bed. So as you know, those beds take up a third of, you know, they're quite modest, these pensioners' bungalows. So there was literally three pr- three places to put a camera. So uh, all of those challenges to come with, and I'm sure we've all we've all had some experience with them. So, but um, we went to the premiere. It's a sweet little film. It's a little miracle. And can I just say we're probably seeing the birth of a rising star called Poppy J Hughes, who plays uh, the little girl in it. So our kid, yes, it's across all platforms now, Apple, Amazon. So. Get it rented, guys. Get the word out there. Let's see if we can get these intrepid young filmmakers made, uh, paid rather. Um, yeah. That's it. And um, often the best films are made with very little money because they're allowed to be much more from the heart rather than messed around with big ideas and producing. It's mm-hmm. a great point. The, the the film has, of course, you know, for 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 the nerds will be oh, you know, that's a bit, but uh, it has. It's all heart. This film. Yeah. And I've got to say this at the risk of sound poetic, you know, at a time where we all need a vision, some hope, even a hopeful vision. It's these young filmmakers, young artists, whatever the medium that they work in, that are, are, we rely on for that. They're coming from our political leaders, are they? So this, uh, I, I described this film as a, an odyssey of hope. You know, and some very funny moments. I mean, we've got John McCardle in it, Ricky Tomlinson, Liam Best, Sharon Byatt. You know, they're all, all all kind of turned up really to to do their bit. You know, so uh, yeah, wonderful. Oh, I'm, I'm very them. pleased with them. And, yeah, and I hope they, I hope it does well for them, just so they can go on and make the next project that they want to make. Yeah. So is it based in the present time, or is it based in the past? Or no, it, 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 it it's very current. Yeah, very current. Mm-hmm. The young happen? girl, the young girl has this dream about playing for Liverpool Football Club. Ah, oh, I won't give great. too much away with that. Our kids, amazing, Our kids. absolutely okay. incredible. And talking of artists, Connor, yes, the ro- I, I'm really fascinated by the wrong box. Right, thank you. Can you, can you tell me or tell us? Uh, the, the the inspiration behind that it's such a beautiful painting <laughs> thank you uh, and uh, i'm glad to say i got shortlisted for the jackson's painting prize this year which i was thrilled about Not so the box right. is part of a series of paintings i did called funny weather us people from up north when things aren't really working right in the world very understatedly we say it's right funny weather isn't it <laughs> and that's where it lands right so i i wanted to get those things off my chest without being angry about things. So the wrong box is, uh, uh, um, it's very image laden, unusual for me because I mainly work in abstract forms now and abstract paintings, but uh, it consists of about 21 paintings. Mm. Um, the wrong box was the was the first of them. Kind of says it really, doesn't it, the wrong box. So you've got images from Alice in Wonderland set against these spaces that really don't work, yet, you know, uh, don't make sense perspectively, but 
all jumbled together. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you. Uh, you like the image. I I have got something though. I have got one of Connor's paintings. Yeah. Which he gave me on my bedroom wall. Actually, I might go and get it. Shall I go and get it's it? Beautiful, beautiful. I'll go and Connor. get it now. I don't know if you can see what I'm wearing, but I haven't got any trousers on. So if I show me bum. Steady, steady, <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> this is a family <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> go on to the Jackson's painting prize. The room was full of young, motivated, enthusiastic painters. Wow. Really pursuing their, their art form. Needs to be a bit closer. Uh, closer, Debbie. darling. It's a little bit distorted. You know, you, it's so, so beautiful. As, I you, just, as you walk My favourite thing about it, of course, is on the back he's written this way up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to do. You, do you, you have to do that with abstract works. Don't yeah, you but not? then you've written oh, mixed now. media, oil glazed. So I, it's signed by you, but it's this way up, and I absolutely, it's so perfect. It's all the perfect colours for my bedroom. It is. Um, it's beautiful. Every night I go to bed, and God bless you, Connor. Bless you, Tom. That's right. very, that's very lovely. And actually, that's what it's all about. Fabulous. That's the best kind of present, something you've worked on, you've made. That's beautiful. Something that somebody's made, yeah, I agree. They're, 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 they're lovely presents. And occasionally occasionally people buy them and take them home, which is wonderful. <laughs> people, people do often ask, do you get, you know, do you get sentimental about I said, very happy to see them going. Oh, bye, darling. Nothing like that red dot. <laughs> yes, there, nothing like that. those red dots, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's a it's a bit like puppies, you know, breeding puppies, which I've done twice. It's just, you know, are you sad to see them go, nope, oh. I love them. But it's <laughs> but it's like their mothers, you know, they go back to try and feed with them and the mother's like, Mrr. and that's how you feel, you're it, so it, it, exhausted. It's, it, it's true, and it's very strange the way you get to think about them. Um, I think I, I read something that Picasso had once said about Guernica was out just as a cat, the, the huge anti-war thing that Picasso had done was out and had been nailed to walls in a car showroom in Manchester. This is, you know, this massive Picasso. And somebody had said to him, are, are you not upset that, you know, there's kind of damage? He said, paintings are like people. They have to go out into the world and take their chances like everybody else. Yeah, that's I love that. That once they leave, they have a life of their own. You know, they they, they get pushed around, moved, and. Mm -hmm. you know. Well, my painting is in my bedroom, darling, and I that's where it stays. I love <laughs> that thought. I love that thought. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear there are lots of young painters, young artists who are coming up in the world and are hopeful about having a career. That's yes. just amazing to hear. It was a great, it was a great room, and all of us have been to a lot of award shows, and we we know that. But this was, everybody's document was on the wall. Yeah. Every, you know, the document about how they feel about things and wh wh whichever way they choose to represent it, illustrationally or abstract or whatever, it was all there on the wall. And the amount of younger people, I would say, it was great. so it was a great room to be in. Right. And only one person, because the crossover really hasn't been made yet, you know, oh, this is the guy off Corey. I've yeah. tried to keep those separate because, of course, what you don't want is, oh, here's an actor that does a bit of painting. It's not yeah. that for me. It's, it yeah. really is a, a, a full-on endeavour. But um, one, one, one young painter came to me and said, Connor, sorry to bother you, but my mum thinks that she knows you. <laughs> <laughs> Would you come and say hello? I said. <laughs> and so I go over to say hello, and she said, "It is you, isn't it?" Oh, I said, Because <laughs> <laughs> I do remember Connell in in Corrie, um, before I met you, I was absolutely terrified by your character, and it was just it because you did it so brilliantly. It was so multi layered. You know, you were charming, you were gorgeous. A bit and like you, you in real nasty. life. <laughs> <laughs> and a killer. It yeah. was amazing. I, I, I mean, at the risk of Sam and falsely modest, I think I said it on the last show, There's a, you need a little bit of luck. The writers really are the key to all of that, aren't they? Because if they'd have written a one-dimensional bully, we'd have said, oh, well, OK, we've seen that mm -hmm. before, and it rolls out. But they really got behind Puffy and then gave me the opportunity to fold out the other stuff, as you say, you know, great with the kids. And and can I just remind, can I just ask you a, a cocktail party question, I suppose? 
<laughs> when I was walking around Salford, what do you think I was asked the most? So, the, the, you know, proper proper people up there, very direct, you know. And uh, it was generally the uh, the matriarchs on the block would say, come here, you. <laughs> and I'd say, what is it? They'd say, now, look, we'll forgive you everything. We just want to know one thing. I said, forgive me everything. The indecent proposal with Anna, <laughs> all the stuff with Norris, all that. I said, yeah, we'll forgive it all. We just want to know one thing. I said, fire away. What is it? We want to know. Do you love Eileen or not? Huh? Isn't that sweet? Oh. Amidst all of that, they just wanted to know. I said, well, I'm going to have to leave you guys to make your own mind up about that. But I will <laughs> come to one scene where he thinks that something bad has happened to Eileen and he's beside himself. I said, I'll leave you with that one. But that's very sweet, isn't it? Yeah, always. Yeah. I mean, the fan, the fans, the fans are totally amazing. I think one of my favourite moments with with you, Connor, though, is with you, John Altman, and Brian Capron all walking down the street, and people go, "Oh my God, the biggest serial killer!" <laughs> <on television." laughs> yes. Oh my God, there's three of them. <laughs> <laughs> and you competing as to who was the worst? Yeah, <laughs> who killed the most people? Yeah, who yeah. who killed the most people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you yeah, win? Great fun. And they're, they're such nice guys as well, aren't they? Very, very cool guys. Yeah. yeah. Did you mm, kill the most people, Connor? No, I, I I mean, it's very funny. Perception's a funny thing. Uh, my my body count is two. Oh, is that all? Yeah. But oh. it's because, it's because uh, Les Dennis, I resided over his demise with a story about my childhood. I suppose he counts. And then I got somebody to kill somebody else. So that doesn't really get technically, that lets me off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> so I only account for two, but perceptions, uh, you know, uh, and the ones that really said, oh, we have to stop all of this. He's going to kill the whole street off in a minute. I thought, great, it's working, obviously. Isn't it? <laughs> those yeah. are brilliant. And I know you loved it up there. I mean, and so did I. So it's it's great. one of those it's one of those uh, great shows that is so lovely to be involved in, isn't it? So listen, so I, may, I know that you and you made uh, you and Les were both the <laughs> ugly sisters, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> So, 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 um, and of course, I'm doing Panto this year. This is all thanks to those in Billingham. So, I'm doing the ba baddies. Uh, so, I'm at the forum in Billingham. Do oh, playing. my God. Have yeah. you been there before, Connor? No, I haven't. It's very cold. Is it? Yeah, it's, it's where I come It's where I come from. Okay. And you'll, you'll go in there and you'll think, smells a bit like uh, bleach. And that that's because, <laughs> that's because it's near next to the swimming pool. So, don't think your nose has gone mad. Okay, no. I'll take I'll take extra layers. So yeah. so of course the whole panto thing is that you know I'm a, I'm a jobbing actor. I've never never done musical theatre. But Les calls me and says, Connor, can you sing? I said, No idea. <laughs> I said, No idea. Why? He said, I've just pitched us for the Ugly Sisters at Manchester Opera House. So I think, well, I'm in. So the lovely thing was, it was such a great time. Seven costume changes, high heels, full makeup, you know, such a... And across the road from the original Coronation Street set in Key Street. So it had a real poetic charm to it. And of course, at my end of my run, I, I, I went, you know, buddy of the year or, or, or a couple of times. <laughs> and then me and Les win the Best Ugly Sisters at the Great British Panto Awards. Who knew? Ooh. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. How did so, you feel walking so, around in high heel shoes? That's what I need to ask you. My feet. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My feet knew it. But it was such a great one. And, and uh, I hadn't really, naive as I am, I hadn't realised the power of musical theatre. Love to love you, baby. <laughs> all of that. All of that. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right across the stage, whole row of dancers behind us, fab, fab stuff, and lost about four stone. Did you? Oh, well, of course. Yeah, I'm not used to that kind of activity. So, yeah. <laughs> I must say, you're looking very good. Thank you. Not that you weren't before, but you you do look very fit. Thanks, darling. I try to I miss, be. I don't. I, don't I do miss your orange suit. Oh uh, well, I, I I wore it at the. There were two premieres for our kid. So it, the orange suit, we like to call it gold. Orange suit. Oh, right, sorry. Differently. So it is a, it, it is a, it, it's a, I have it as a lucky suit to so the, the, the premiere that we did in Liverpool at Crosby. 
was in this beautiful old Art Deco cinema. The community have bought the cinema because they were going to redevelop. So it has the whole organ still in there, whole Art Deco. So I put the gold suit on for a bit of good luck to it. So well, I'm going to start posting it out again because I'm sure a couple of people were looking at me going, there he is, big gob, big gob, <laughs> gold suit on. I said, we're here to sell the film, right, guys? I said, yeah, I said, good, okay. I go, you can do that. I, 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 exactly. So what's, <laughs> com what's coming up, Connor? Apart uh, from us well, getting everyone to watch this film. Uh, I'm, in terms of acting, I'm straight up to Billingham next week. We start rehearsals there. And I've got, um, I'm in a show, a painting show in the Mall in London, which opens, on, I've got two works in there, which opens on Thursday. Are well, you coming to? Does this mean you are coming to London? Well, it does, but because I'm running out of road, it means I will get the train, do the show, and then get because you know I'm down in Plymouth, so uh, I will get the train. I'll get the late train, nine o'clock train back to Plymouth because I still have yeah, bags to pack, and I'm I'm really I don't know about you guys, but I'm really slow with all of that. And six weeks for me is like six years, you know. I remember when I did a, a Nemo tour many years ago and we were in Muscat, which is probably one of the most beautiful places in the world, you know, with 12 miles of beach. And then we came back to England. We went on tour in England. The first place we went to was Billingham. I mean, talk about the sublime <laughs> to the ridiculous. It's wonderful. Life's wonderful, isn't it? It is. It's an actor's <laughs> life for me. An actor's life for me. Actor's life oh, for me. We yeah. adore you, Connor. So our kids, we, we can get it anywhere, can't we? Yeah, so on, on most platforms, I think I sent you guys over a little tag for which platforms are on. If you could show that, would be great. Yeah, Hass will put oh. that everywhere, won't you, Hass, for us? Yeah, and would you yeah. would you mind if I just a big shout out? Daniel P. Lewis, who wrote this script, plays Thomas, a young man with cerebral palsy. I can only tell you, it the transformation, you know how careful you have to be with that kind of depiction and so on. His performance is extraordinary. It's extraordinary. So uh, I'm all, all props to him. This persuasive young man for two and a half years, it, this is the one for you. Gently, gently, you know, I met him at Ricky, uh, Ricky Thomas and Charity Gig, painting gig he was doing. And gently, gently over two years through lockdown, you know, yours, because I was um and ahhing. I'm difficult to get out of the Alamo. But finally, to get it done. So it's a huge achievement to write it, to push it through. And then to play this uh, uh, young Thomas in it, extraordinary, extraordinary. So for that alone, and some drop, I don't want to make it sound too heavy, there's some fall over funny, uh, funny, that's everything this little film. As you said before, it's got a lot of heart. So if people can support it, that would be great. We 100%, I can't we wait will. to watch it. Thank I you. can't wait to watch it. Connor, we love you. Come we back do. and see us soon. Any time for you guys. So lovely to be with you this morning. Thanks so much for being so, well, wonder beds. <laughs> <laughs> lovely to Thank meet you. Darling. Darling. And you are our wonder bloke. Love it. Yeah. I'm going to put that on. I'm going to get a badge. <laughs> I'll get one for you. Bye, darling. God bless, guys. Thank you so Bye. much. Oh, how my did, goodness. How divine is he, Nat? He's oh. absolutely wonderful. He gets my red dot any day. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, what a lovely, gentle man for someone who plays such a horror. <laughs> so, I know. But, I and know. he is very, very tall and very large, but very soppy and very lovely. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. love him. And we do love him. Anyway, guys, we've got to go because we've been we chatting have. to Connor. We've run out of time. Uh, so see you all soon. Zoom. Bye. 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 Bye.